I know you're getting these details as we are as well. In general, how are airports secured? So these checkpoints are secured by TSA officers. They are unarmed civilians, um, and their job is to check bags. Uh, they are not trained in the use of lethal force in the way that law enforcement officers are. But typically, each airport checkpoint will have an armed officer on duty uh, to support the screeners. And what it appears happened here is there was a, a very rapid law enforcement uh, response to the shooting incident, resulting in, uh, if these reports are correct, the wounding of the individual who opened fire on the TSA. Uh, screeners. And Richard, what is the significance, as you say, if the facts that we have now are in fact correct, what is the significance of a single gunman versus multiple? Uh, to be honest, if there's only one gunman, it's a, it's a major sigh of relief. I mean, one of the nightmare scenarios from a terrorist standpoint is a multiple gunman scenario. A single gunman scenario, we have had a large number of these in the United States. They typically are uh, disgruntled workers, people with um, emotional problems, uh, a grudge, whatever the cause may be. They are much less dangerous to the wider area than a multiple gunmen situation. Nonetheless, the police uh, assume the worst at first, and that's one of the reasons why you're seeing the massive response uh, at LAX, the evacuation of the passengers, and the careful uh, checking of the area to, to make absolutely certain that it is only a single person involved, uh, which I hate to put it in this way, from a law enforcement standpoint, is in fact the best case uh, in a situation like this. In events like this, Richard, how are the police trained to respond? I mean, you just alluded to it now. Terminal 3 is closed. It's being evacuated. What else is going on behind the scenes? So, so the, the first uh, thing that all law enforcement officers in the United States are trained to do is respond to the threat directly. If they see or hear a shooting, they will go directly at that, that event and try to resolve it by use of force uh, if necessary. My suspicion, once this comes out, is that that will be what happens. Once that happens, however, and the immediate threat is resolved, there are many other issues that have to be dealt with. They will call a mobilization, and so what you're seeing here at LAX in this video is a very large mobilization of several different types of agencies, law enforcement, emergency management, fire, EMTs. They will uh, create a secure area a sort of inner perimeter, which they will try to control uh, and move people out of, checking them while they leave to make sure they're not uh, either injured or witnesses or involved in the shooting, uh, and then an outer perimeter, which is where the people are evacuated to. Uh, and once they get control of the scene, then the investigation begins, uh, and anyone who was injured will receive uh, medical treatment uh, appropriate for their injuries. Uh, Richard, you and I have had this conversation far too many times recently. What does all of this say about safety and security in this country? We will. We, we really have, and it's a, it's a terrible commentary about America that we have uh, this frequency of shooting incidents. Uh, there are a lot of firearms in America, but in my personal opinion, that's that's not the primary driver of this. Uh, this is uh, uh, unu we have an unusually high incident of shooting incidents like this compared to peer countries around the world, and it's really uh, a dreadful commentary. Uh, we are, by and large, a very safe country. These things are exceptional, and they attract our attention because they're so extraordinary. Um, but it, it, the, the frequency with which we've been talking about these on television is really, from a national perspective, just unacceptable.